Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another viewer request video where a viewer wanted to understand, hey, what is a data engineering road career roadmap look like in 2025, 2026, 2027, and beyond? Basically, what can you expect if you're just entering, you know, data engineering, but also if you're in the middle of the career, where should you be at? Um, you know, kind of give you an idea of the different phases of the data engineering career from, you know, the foundational, where you're just learning Python and SQL, to being a junior data engineer, to mid-level, to, you know, more of a staff principal data engineer, uh, and talk really about kind of what the different gates of skills and tools you'll need to be familiar with to move from those different positions within your career and so you can use this as kind of a guide to make sure you're continuing to progress your skill set uh, with the aim of obviously increasing your paycheck um, and making sure you continue to get promoted and continue to get good job offers so that you can advance uh, your career. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and if you like these type of videos, please uh, join my Patreon. You can see them all a week ahead of time on there. Um, and it's totally free too. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing I want to talk about is, you know, really just the basic skills you would need to become a data engineer. Um, and these are all things you can really develop within, I'd say, around a six month time frame. Um, so, you know, this is if you're just starting your career in data engineering, you're switching your career into it, uh, you're a student, this is probably where you're starting out at. Um, and first, the kind of core programming skills you're going to want to learn are SQL, uh, which is pretty much mandatory, uh, and then also choose another language like Python. Some people prefer Rust, some people prefer other languages. I personally am a Python guy and I think it's one of the most universally applicable, but definitely SQL and then one other language. Uh, and then make sure you at least have a familiarity with Bash. Um, that will give you, you know, kind of the basics for interacting with most systems that you'll need to, you know, from VMs to most databases, um, to, you know, just running scripts to interact and automate some of those processes. Um, and then you're also going to want to develop a familiarity with, you know, kind of different data warehousing solutions out there. Um, understand what relational databases like Postgres or MySQL would look like versus a NoSQL, MongoDB, or Redis database. Uh, and then also understand basic data structures uh, within there. So, you know, arrays, hash maps, how to do things like sorting, set up trees, um, and also, you know, within here, you know, you're going to want to learn the basics for designing data pipelines uh, and the cloud platforms that will host all these services that you'll be using. So also with that, you know, understanding you're familiar with Docker for containerized applications, likely we'll use something like VS Code as a code editor. Um, if you want to develop and host your own projects, which I highly recommend you do, it's a great way to prove out your skills before actually landing a job. Um, Getting familiar with GitHub, posting your projects on there, familiar with Git is really essential for working with the CICD practices that large organizations use these days. Um, and then there's a few different projects you can host, like you know, building some small ETL jobs, learning SQL aggregations, maybe bringing in DBT to automate those and build a sequence of SQL uh, scripts that you can actually show off and say, hey, this is my transformation pipeline. Um, and you know, just try to complete you know two to three basic projects like, you know, something like a weather data ingestion analysis pipeline. Um, and there are ample, ample free tools on my YouTube channel and other YouTube channels for learning Python, SQL, Pandas, um, and walking you through different projects that you can actually undertake using those tools. So the first real job or role you're going to have in kind of the data engineering space likely is going to be as a junior data engineer. Um, and so I thought for that, kind of looking at, hey, what does a typical junior data engineer job posting look like might be helpful. So we can talk about kind of where you will need to know to land these roles and kind of what skills you're going to develop through them as well. Um, and so typically, you know, this is going to be your, again, you're just out of college getting a job as a data engineer, or if you're an analyst trying to pivot into data engineering, typically a junior data engineer role is a good way to do that. Um, and here you're going to learn the data engineering essentials, uh, if you haven't already. So learning about, you know, modern enterprise data warehousing with tools like BigQuery, Snowflake, Redshift, um, learning things like orchestration and building actual production data pipelines with tools like Apache Airflow. Um, and also, you know, different file formats, CSV versus JSON versus Parquet versus Avro, uh, different types of data modeling as well. You know, your star versus snowflake schemas, how, learning how to design effective database schemas and how to map data so that it's uh, efficiently queried. 
Um, and then, you know, underpinning all of these are the big cloud platforms. So this is where you're gonna really get to get your you know, hands on a lot of these cloud services that are uh, pretty much impossible to learn on your own uh, if you're paying for them. Um, not a lot, but there's just some. Um, and so here you have BigQuery, Cloud Functions um, for Google. You have you know S3, Lambda, Glue for AWS, um, and Redshift, obviously. Uh, and then Azure, probably going to be Data Fabric these days, and Azure Blob Storage for a Data Lake, um, probably maybe a Azure Data Factory um, as well. <clears throat> and also, as part of an organization, you know, you're going to need to learn how to use CICD pipelines. So this is where having an understanding of Git workflows, GitHub Actions, basic Terraform for provisioning infrastructure in a programmatic way are really crucial to making sure you can do programmatic deployment of code so you have the proper checks and balances that large organizations require. Um, and then also, you're going to want to learn how to start integrating with monitoring systems, you know, like Datadog, like Prometheus, and understanding how you can build monitoring uh, into your data plat data pipelines so that you can understand what's happening within the monitor performance and learn how to optimize them as well. Um, and here, you know, some typical projects you'll undertake as a junior data engineer, something like building an end-to-end -end batch pipeline from, you know, public API to a data warehouse, um, you know, some things you can do on your, that's something you can do on your own as well. Um, you know, learn how to schedule hair flow, adding basic alerting, uh, understanding data quality checks uh, are all good projects that you know you might do internally for a company, but are also good and easy to learn on your own and showcase on a GitHub as we discussed earlier uh, to show off some of your skills there. Now, the next step in your career is likely going to be a you know kind of mid-level data engineer position, typically just data engineer. Um, and this is where you're really gonna get started, you know, you start independently managing real pipelines and production systems. You know, typically junior data engineers are just working on tasks as given versus you know, mid-level data engineers are said, hey, you, you got to go design this project um, or you got to design this new pipeline and decide this, what systems you're going to use, do that analysis. And so really here it becomes more about understanding, hey, how do I compare two different tools to use the most effective one? How do I use the latest features and you know, use the latest in data to make sure that I'm designing the most effective pipelines, not just because it's a cool new feature. Um, and so here, you know, you're going to want to build on your workflow orchestration skills, um, start branching out into things like streaming systems, you know, Kafka, Red Panda, Flink, um, uh, Spark structured streaming is also something that exists. Um, also just Spark for data processing as well, will most likely become more of a part of your day to day. And then also you're going to want to familiarize yourself with concepts like data lakes, data lake houses, like Apache Iceberg, uh, uh, Databricks is Delta Lake, uh, Apache Hootie is, you know, kind of a more legacy lake house. Um, and then you also have data versioning and lineage tools like Open Lineage, like Data Hub, like Marquez, that you can actually start to build into your pipelines to understand the flow of your data, how it's changing over time, um, and really get that deeper understanding of, you know, how to design your pipelines for efficiency and also understand how your data might change, even if it's not just an explicit error, but actually, you know, more data files gonna, or more rows are going to corrupt than usual. That's something that you're only going to catch with the next level um, of, you know, kind of understanding of your pipelines. Um, then you're also going to want to learn how to build and implement your own unit tests um, with tools like PyTest, mocking, data contract enforcement, making sure your pipelines or your, your data stand, you're receiving data on a set time frame, um, which means you need to have pipelines that perform to a certain standard. Um, and also thinking about implementing backfill strategies for if you need to run a pipeline for a back set of dates to collect data for something like a compliance report. Um, schema evolution for you know slowly changing schemas over time as you know your business might be collecting more data around customers um, or handling late arriving data as if it had arrived on time. Those are all kind of the next step of understanding you know improving data quality and testing, um, which help you get to the next level of you know kind of that senior uh, architect level data engineer. Um, you're also going to want to learn get deeper into infrastructure as you get more responsibility. So understanding Terraform for infrastructure provisioning is going to be even more important, uh, as well as Kubernetes secrets. You know things like you know Spark and Airflow are going to probably use Kubernetes um, to actually run in a production workflow. So understanding how they work under the hood is really important for troubleshooting them. Um, and then also secrets management with HashiCorp, AWS Secrets Manager, understanding how to store and access secrets securely across your pipelines uh, efficiently. Um, and those are kind of the typical skills you would need um, to kind of hit that level of mid-level data engineer. Some projects you might want to think about implementing on your own if you're a junior data engineer trying to become mid-level data engineer is, you know, 
create a real-time change data capture pipeline from Postgres to Redshift uh, using Kafka or implement schema validation within Iceberg, Glue, Athena stack, um, or you know, add a machine learning model that scores itself uh, in an Airflow DAG using Databricks and S3. There's a lot of ways that you can showcase these skills if you're trying to angle for promotion to start actually using them in production. Now, the next and kind of almost final progression uh, of the data engineer path before you roll into, you know, becoming a data engineering manager and kind of more administrative things, which not going to go into this video, you know, I want to focus on just like, hey, how do you become the ultimate data engineer? Uh, and that's really when you start hitting the kind of, you know, staff, principal, platform, data engineer role, um, or you know, something that uh, some organizations will call something like a data architect, right? And here, it's really, you know, about higher level strategic thinking, right? Thinking about, you know, not only how to design an efficient pipeline, but how your organization is using data at scale and how you're going to design all of your pipelines, you know, building templates um, so you can empower your data engineers and empower your business to run faster and to develop faster. Um, and so here, you know, you're going to want to think about, hey, how do I assess the best modal of pipelines, you know, batch versus real time, which works best for our business needs? Um, do we want to implement something like a data mesh um, where, you know, each team owns their own domain? There's data contracts between teams, your decentralized governance, how you're going to integrate ML into both your data team and also into your business as a whole. Um, and it's also your job to start staying on top of emerging trends, you know, understanding things like, hey, how do we do retrieval augmented generation pipelines? Um, use things like vector databases, you know, Weavey, Pinecone, or, you know, Snowflake has their own vector database too now. Um, also understanding, you know, hey, you have to mentor junior engineers and you know, lead those architectural decisions, lead the platform migrations, build resilient pipelines. But really, you're not going to be hands on keyboard so much as designing the systems that are going to be using those pipelines and leave it to your uh, lower level engineers for, you know, kind of more of actually building them themselves. Um, and, you know, you're also going to be in charge of designing those internal data platforms, that mesh architecture, um, and leading initiatives around how do you optimize scale, uh, cost, latency across these pipelines? How do you achieve SLAs that you define so that you have you know, goals as an organization that you can work towards to make sure that you have uh, you know, achieved the, the performance that you have set out to, to achieve um, and also make sure your business is able to run smoothly as a result. Um, and here it's really about strategy and vision and advocating for you know, your data team, um, owning that data quality at scale, evaluating new tools, leading POCs with new tools, um, and really just championing platform scalability and reusability. Uh, so something you, know, you want to you know might want to think about as you're moving through your career um, it, it, through all these stages is certifications. Um, a lot of people hold a lot of stock in them. I'm not a huge certification guy, but they are pretty helpful, especially if you're just starting out to get, you know, things like the Google uh, Data Engineer Certification, um, all the big cloud proficiency certs. There's a Databricks Certified Data Engineer, you know, really choose the systems that you would want to work with and then go get certified in those systems. Um, and then there's also a ton of books and courses and YouTube channels out there for learning individual coding languages or individual tools, including mine. So don't be afraid to go out and search and get some free tools. I wouldn't even really feel right recommending paid ones. Um, so that is really everything that I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoy this video, a little exploration of the data engineer career path, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.